Hi, I'm Brian Heidelberger, a partner with the law firm of Winston & Strawn in Chicago and here today with another mini advertising law lesson. Today's law lesson, the FTC staff reminds influencers and brands to disclose the material connection. But first, I've got a complaint to lodge here, people. I've been doing these videos for several years now, and yet I have not been offered any of that lucrative influencer cash. I don't know, maybe there's a judge's gavel company out there or one of those scales of justice companies that want to get involved with me. Even for those of our friends across the pond, listen, I am not too proud to wear a barrister's wig, so please think about it. So what are we talking about today? Well, on Wednesday, April 19th, the FTC sent out a press release letting us know that they send out 90 letters to both celebrities, athletes, and other influencers, as well as brands, reminding everyone to clearly and conspicuously disclose the material connection when there is a relationship and they are posting on social media. Now, this was in response to a petition filed by a company or an organization called Public Citizen, as well as other organizations who were seeing many influencer posts that were not disclosing relationship. Now, the FTC reminded us that a material connection should be clearly and conspicuously disclosed. And that's when you've got a business or family relationship, a monetary payment, or you received a free gift of the product and you're posting about it on social media. Now, specifically, both the public citizen complaint as well as the FTC letters addressed Instagram posts. As we know, Instagram is becoming a hot form for not only major celebrities and athletes, but also those lower end influencers which are seeing a lot of traction these days. And the FTC reminded not only do you need to clearly and conspicuously disclose, but they explain that that disclosure needs to be prominent and it cannot be past the click to receive more button. And the reason for that is the FTC wants people to see the disclosure right away, not have to click to see more information because frankly, many people don't do that. So what has the FTC also told us? Well, they said that disclosure of the connection in a group of hashtags is no good. People aren't going to see, understand, notice that. So you wanna separate out your disclosure of material connection from a group of long and other uh, hashtags. The FTC also pointed out that disclosures like hashtag SP, hashtag like thanks brand, or hashtag partner may not be specific enough disclosure such that people understand there is a connection. Now that raised a lot of questions with clients this week of, hey, we disclose we have partnered with XYZ company. Isn't that good enough disclosure? And I think that it's possible that it may be. The FTC hasn't necessarily singled out the word partner such that it can never be used and it's not appropriate ever. What they've indicated is hashtag partner alone, especially in a clump of other hashtags, isn't enough disclosure. It may be, and I'm not entirely clear at this point, that something like, I've partnered with hashtag brand would be sufficient. So what else have we learned from the FTC? Well, in their letter to brands, the FTC has noted that if brands have a specific social media policy, it should address how it handles influencers and the FTC indicated that you brands, if you don't have a policy that addresses how you handle influencers specifically, you should really consider coming up with one. So what should be in that influencer policy? Well, we've created a number of them for clients and we hope to have a couple very easy to understand bullet points. First, agree in advance what the influencer is going to say as a disclosure. It's not probably enough to say comply with FTC requirements or disclose your connection. You really want to tell them what to say or get an agreement as to what they're going to say. Otherwise, they might use their own judgment, they might do the wrong thing, and you ultimately might be liable. So what should they disclose? Well, of course, hashtag ad or hashtag advertisement is great, and it's especially necessary if you are involved in the creation of the content. The FTC has said previously before that things like hashtag sponsors sponsored are only appropriate in those situations where you really didn't have input into the content and people are giving their impartial opinion. So you can do that creatively, of course, or organically by saying, I partnered with this brand to create this content, or even shorter, 
the brand and I created this content together, that would get to the fact that you had input as the brand or the agency into the content. Now, what other bullet points do you want? Well, the disclosure needs to be at the top of the post. It should be separated out and it should be in a font and style easily read and understood. It should be if for a video, both in the video itself and we would advise in the description, although I don't think the FTC has specifically said that. Disclosure in a bio of an influencer isn't, isn't good enough. And of course, you want the disclosure in each post and people shouldn't have to scroll down or as we just learned from the FTC, click a more button to see the disclosure. For live streaming video, you want the disclosure at multiple points along the video because people jump in, in and out. And of course, as the agency or advertiser, you wanna make sure that your deal with the influencer says that, that if they fail to disclose, that you can get them to change their post or to take it down, and if they continue to fail, that you have the right to terminate your relationship with them and maybe even get a refund. Now, these things, these rules, don't apply if there is no endorsement or product claims made. If this is mere product placement, then the disclosure rules probably aren't necessary and the FTC has told us that before. So we hope this information is helpful and you start putting together your influencer guidelines if you don't have them. If you want more information on mini law lessons, you can go to youtube.com backslash Brian Heidelberger. And until next time, let's be careful out there.